Hello everybody, my name is Andy Langdon. I'm a naturalist with the Elkhart County Parks Department and um, today we're going to, to continue our series on nature A to Z and we're going to focus on the letter F for fox. <laughs> now I'm going to do this a little bit differently, make it a little bit more interactive with you just for the fun of it. Um, anyway, we're going to have a, a quiz and I'm going to give you a little bit of time. You can always stop the video and t talk about it or think about the, the question. But we want to talk about the, the foxes here in the state of Indiana. Okay? So your first question is, how many species of foxes live in Indiana? How many species of foxes live in Indiana? One, two, three, four, or all of them. Okay, I give you a few minutes to what uh, to think about it. Do 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 Time's up, and the answer is two. So there are two foxes in the state of Indiana. And um, one of them is our friend the red fox here and the gray fox. So we call the red fox Volps Volps, which is a scientific name, um, and it means fox fox. <laughs> so then we got the, uh, the gray fox, and his scientific name is Eurasian Senator Argentius. It's a long name, but it means gray fox ashy silver okay so well, those are the two foxes that we have in the state of indiana question number two all right the red fox is native to the state of indiana okay this is the friend the red fox now is he native to the state of indiana has he always lived here that'd be true or false that question is false the red fox was actually introduced in about the 1850s. Now that doesn't mean that we didn't have foxes in North America. As a matter of fact, we've got about four different kind of foxes, depending on what you, uh, how you say it. There might some people think five because you got the uh, the island fox on the coast, just off the coast of California. But uh, there are four foxes in in North America. Okay. So you've got the, um, the Arctic fox, which lives up in Alaska. And then you've got the, uh, the kit fox. And then you've got the, um, the, the red fox and the gray fox. Okay. Now, question number three. How many of you think the gray fox is native to the state of Indiana? Was it brought here or has it always been here? So question number three. The gray fox is native to Indiana. True or false? Okay. That question is true. The, uh, the gray fox is native to the state of Indiana. As a matter of fact, when the red fox came over, it kind of took up the niche of the gray fox. The, uh, the gray fox can, can get away from the red fox, but the red fox is just everywhere now. He has learned to adapt with people. He's very adaptable, very intelligent critter, one of the most intelligent animals on the face of the earth. So he's very intelligent. All right. What is the largest fox in North America? Is it A, the red fox, B, the kit fox, C, the gray fox, or D, the arctic fox? The largest fox, what's the largest fox in North America? And actually, the red fox here is the largest fox in North America. He's a very large fox, and uh, other foxes kind of stay away from him. They, they mind their own business around him. Foxes have round pupils, elliptical pupils. The entire eye is dark brown. So do they have round pupils like ours, or do they have elliptical pupils like a cat's pupil? The entire eye is dark brown. Okay, the answer to that one is they are elliptical. So if you look at the eye really, really close here, you'll notice that the eye has kind of a, like a cat's eye in it. So it's elliptical. Another name for a gray fox is A, a kit fox, 
B, a swift fox, or C, a tree fox. Another name for a gray fox is a kit fox, a swift fox, or a tree fox. Okay, the answer to that one is, it's a great, it's a tree fox. Tree foxes, boys and girls, have these, um, they call them gray foxes, some people call them tree foxes, but they have these, uh, these claws like a kitty cat. So they, they can't take them all the way in like a kitty cat does, but they're retractable claws. And they're able to actually climb up a tree. They can climb straight up it, just like a cat can climb straight up a tree. And they can turn their paws, so like a squirrel does, so they can come right back down the tree. So they're, uh, they're, they're called tree foxes and, um, and also gray foxes because they are gray. So many times um, tree foxes or gray foxes will go up into a tree and they'll just, uh, they'll just wait there for danger to pass. Sometimes they actually fall asleep in the tree. So if you ever see a fox up in a tree, it's the only fox in the world that climbs a tree. And it's the only member of the dog family that actually climbs a tree. How can you tell the difference between a red fox and a gray fox? And this is a little hard, but um, it helps you to remember, okay? Uh, sometimes they are hard to tell apart, especially when you see them off in the distance. So how can you tell the difference between a red fox and a gray fox? A. Red foxes are red and gray foxes are gray. Duh. Uh, B. Gray foxes are always smaller than red foxes, okay? C. Red foxes have a white tipped tail and four black socks. D. Take a picture of it and ask a naturalist. Red foxes are red and gray foxes are gray. Gray foxes are always smaller than red foxes. Red foxes have a white tipped tail and four black socks, or take a picture of it and ask a naturalist. <clears throat> okay, there are actually several ways that you can tell the red fox from the gray fox. The best way to tell is probably to, to look at the white tip on the end of the tail and the black socks. Okay, that's probably the best way to tell. A gray fox will have a black stripe all the way down his tail So that's how you can tell if it's a gray fox or not. All right, if they're running, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes, but uh, you can look at their tail, and if their tail is up, uh, many times that's a red fox. If their tail is down, that's a gray fox. Where do red foxes have their young? A, under buildings or rocks. B, they dig a hole or use an existing hole in the ground. Or C, they go inside brush piles or a thick brush. Okay, where do red foxes have their babies? A, under buildings or rocks. B, they dig a hole or use an existing hole in the ground. Or C, they go inside brush piles or thick brush. Okay, generally speaking, a red fox will use a culvert or they'll dig out a, an existing animal's home like a groundhog hole or something like that and have their babies inside of that. So they usually don't go in brush piles unless they're, they're getting away from danger or looking for something or something like that. But uh, a gray fox will. They'll go into brush, they'll go into buildings, underneath your buildings, and they, they'll raise their, their babies there. But not the red fox. It just shows the difference between red foxes and gray foxes. And there are quite a few differences. All right, a couple more questions here. What's a female fox called? What is a female fox called? Okay, is it A, Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner, Blitzen, Bruce, Marvin, Clyde, or Rudolph? <laughs> Once again, what's a female fox called? A Dasher, a Dancer, a Prancer, a Vixen, a Comet, a Cupid, a Donner, a Blitzen, a Bruce, Marvin, Clyde, or Rudolph. Okay, so a female fox is called a vixen. All right? A male fox is called a dog. And their babies, we usually call them kits. You can actually call them pups, if you, but they're usually called kits. All right, foxes eat, 
mammals, insects, berries, or all of the above? Foxes eat mammals, insects, berries, or all of the above? Okay, that one is all of the above. They eat all of the above. They eat insects, mammals, birds, berries, lots of different things, and uh, sometimes they get in your trash. So they, uh, they're, they're very versatile, and they're what we call um, opportunists. So foxes are opportunists. They eat about whatever they can find. Okay, last question. What animal will, will kill a fox? Do you think an owl will kill a fox? Do you think a coyote will kill a fox? Do you think people would kill a fox? Or do you think they'll all kill a fox? Actually, they will all kill a fox. The, uh, even the owls. Owls are one of the biggest predators of, uh, of foxes because they, uh, they get the young ones. Most foxes don't live to be even a year old. They, uh, they, their lifespan is around one to five years. Okay, but most of them just get past that one year, they'll be doing fine. But uh, when they're that young, they got a lot of enemies, right? So they usually have uh, about four, sometimes five babies, whether it be gray fox or red fox. They usually have about four or five babies, and uh, those babies are they uh, they're usually born in the springtime. They mate in uh, January all the way into March. And most of their mating is February and March. Um, they are in the dog family, but they're a lot like a cat. And depends on the, the fox you're talking about. But most of the foxes, they will actually sneak up on their prey like a cat does. So they're they're a lot like a cat. They got these elliptical pupils like a kitty cat. And um, they've got what's called digi toes. So they, they actually stand up on their toes. Really unique about a fox is they can actually use the Earth's magnetic field to locate a mouse underneath the snow. About 70% of the time, they can catch a mouse in the snow using that method. About 70% of the time, they can actually catch a mouse underneath about three foot of snow. Foxes can hear a watch ticking from 40 yards away. 40 yards. Now, this is not uh, this is not a big fox. This is a baby fox. Okay. So I just put the baby fox out there to make it look even even further away. But that's about 40 yards. It might be 41 yards. It might be 39 yards. But it's right around 40 yards. But here's the adult. And you see. That adult could hear my watch ticking from 40 yards away. So they can hear really, really well. Here's my watch. <laughs> now, some of the uh, Native Americans considered him the red devil on the earth because he's very, very smart and could outsmart most of their traps and things like that. So they, uh, they call him the red devil on the earth. And foxes have digigrade toes so they can walk on their toes and their heels don't even touch the ground. They got these long whiskers like a cat. Those long whiskers helps them to feel around at night when it's hard to see something then they can uh, they can use these whiskers to feel around at night so just like a cat would do. So they're a lot like a cat but they are in the dog family, the canid family, okay? So they are in the dog family. If you want to know how to tell a red fox from a gray fox from a coyote, then check out this link. And uh, it's got a little quiz in there, and it shows you different foxes and coyotes, and you're supposed to decide which one's a fox and which one's a coyote, a gray fox, a red fox, or a coyote. All right, well, my name is Andy Langdon. I'm a naturalist with the Elkhart County Parks, and this is the series F on Nature's A to Z. And uh, we're talking about the foxes of the state of Indiana.